he records folk music under an assumed name because he says it helps him with his feelings, for example. And that's one way. That's, um, really? The songs, oh, they're pretty good. I'm, I mean, I'm his dad, so maybe I'm biased, but they're pretty good. But they're becoming <laughs> more honest. So this is the first episode of Birds of Amsterdam, which is a podcast created by me, Joe Cam, the host and creator of Zero Point Fiction Podcast. And who are you? Sir? Um, my name is Mai Tai, but you can call me Mike, and I'm the I'm the creator of this fan page, the Patriot fan page called um, Legman or Sure Shot John. Okay, and you yeah. we um. You and I crossed paths, for anyone who didn't listen to our last interview together, I did an interview with Stephen Conrad a while back, because um, I love the show Patriot, and you were also a massive fan, and that's yeah. how we got uh, in touch on social media, and then we kind of just have been in touch ever since. Yeah, I mean, after I, I finished Patriot, I just have to, you know, find all Stephen Conrad interviews I can find out there. And I found I found one with Joe, with, with Mr. Zero Point Fiction, and I really enjoy him. And then we eventually crossed paths on the social media. And yeah, the, and, and it just go from there. And we, we, we get to talk. And at that time, I'm also doing like a, a film thesis, you know, like a, um, and thanks. Um, like I'm so lucky that Joe is also a musician and he's a songwriter. And I found a song that kind of fits with my with my story. And I and thank God he allowed me to use it because it's it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. So you ended up using <clears throat> one of my songs for uh, for one of your film uh, projects. So the cool thing is that I'm on one side of the planet. You're on the other side of the planet. You're in Thailand. We're 12 hours away, yeah. and we have it's connected. We've connected over this show, and you and I have both met a lot of people um, because of our mutual love for this show. And I, the plan with this uh, this podcast series is we're going to go episode by episode throughout both seasons of Patriot, kind of breaking down and talking about each episode. And then we're going to also bring in other guests fans or yeah. people who have worked on the show and um, have interviews with them and get a deeper look inside the uh, the show through the eyes of, you know, people who actually worked on it and um, people who were just big fans. So, yeah, that's, there, there's a lot to talk about this show. There's tons of material out there that, that we will have fun together. I mean, us and other fans that you and me have, you know, um, become friends with and also even the people behind the show, I, I, I cannot believe this, but um, I'm lucky enough to you know get to connect with some of them and get to you know call some of them friends and and I'm really look I'm really hoping that we will get some of them on and I think it would be a hell of a time. It's really going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we'll we'll get some uh, we'll get some guests, some people that uh, worked on the show. Hopefully, we'll get uh, Stephen Conrad himself at some point to to join us for one. Um, oh, that would be double great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he, uh, even though he's moved on to so many projects since then, I get the feeling that Patriot is his his baby. You know, I feel like it it's is. his. Uh, if he was given the opportunity, he would definitely jump right back into that the world of uh, of Patriot and John Lakeman. Yeah. I'm sure of that too, and 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 the fans would you know really support. I mean, I don't know how many of us are out there, but like I I think us Patriot fans are like the biggest fans. Like I mean, we we just love it. It's just something different than other shows. Like the fans here, there are some certain relationship that you don't get from a big show, you know, in right. comparison to our niche shows like Patriot. I mean. The fans are tight. Like I, don't, I, I don't get it. I never seen this before. It's yeah. it's very attractive to people who have a deep appreciation for film, for for tons yeah. of reasons. But it's one of those uh, shows that you can, you can really dig into, 
you know, analyze and, and, and just keep coming up with new things and new theories and new things yeah. to appreciate about the show. I mean, everything from the, the cinematography to the dialogue characters, it's just music. The, yeah. The music yeah. for sure. Oh my God. Yeah. So I, uh, I rewatched episode one last night. Did you recently watch episode one? I, I, I did. I just I just watched it like a like an hour ago or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's really fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's too fresh. Yeah, it's too fresh. Yeah, I, I, and, I made some I mean, notes. I'm sure like the two of us has watched maybe, probably too many times of the first episode. I feel like because <coughs> this is the episode and that you would like to sh- to show it to your friends, right? Because it's also the first and also just you know establish everything and. And I feel like um, before before watching Patriot, I always felt like Breaking Bad has the best pilot episode, right? But then, yeah, the um, pilot episode of Patriot just you know blew out right out of the park, and it's 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 amazing. It's you, you get to to see everything to see John's you know as a spy and also see him as a songwriter. We, we get to see all the stakes and the establishment of in story and yeah, and that. What happened at the at the beginning, like the cold open, and to see our friends react to uh, our boy Steven getting pushed, you know, that's just that's always worth it every time I I rewatch it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the um, yeah. the episode starts uh, actually it starts in the in a the boardroom like the um, in the job yeah. interview right. Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> to set it up, he's um, he's working in like a covert. Uh, government agency where he's uh, he he needs to get to Luxembourg and yeah. the only way he can get through to Luxembourg with this big pile of cash that he needs so he can you know bribe some Iranian guy or whatever he's he's got going on he's he has to get a job at this place called Macmillan so he's uh, he's in there and the first scene of the movie when he's sitting in the interview you get the uh, it's you get the dialogue, the engineering dialogue. Which when I first saw it, I thought mm-hmm. that that was all real. So that they yeah. have these long conversations where you don't know what they're talking about. They're talking about the the whatever shafts, donut and the, spacing. Yeah, yeah, all the hunch you know, ham. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the bolts all, and the rings and the yeah, <laughs> and the, all this stuff. It turns out it's it's all it's all gibberish. Yeah, I, yeah. I think. So, I, I, yeah, yeah. Me, I'm sure most people when they first read it, they're like, they assume that that this is like real engineer talk that they're that they're discussing about pipe yeah. fitting and things like that. But it's just all gibberish that uh, I guess Stephen Conrad made up, which makes it so much more hilarious. <laughs> and 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 in in this show, you get like a minutes long speech of this nonsense language. Yeah, yeah you have a few it's scenes throughout the amazing. Series. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a more qualified guy named Steven who's also applying mm-hmm. for the same job but and he needs this job because it's yeah, part of it's a, a nice nice Asian guy <clears throat> this nice Asian guy and uh, yeah. the poor Asian guy uh, as he's <laughs> leaving the interview you know John yeah. Lakeman needs he needs the job so he pushes him in front of a bus mm-hmm. so which I bring, mean after Steven give him like an encouragement too <laughs> yeah, he was very nice to him. <laughs> yeah, and then he's standing next to him, and he pushes him in front of a bus, which uh, you know mm. leads to him having massive uh, brain trauma and, and things like that. And, but um, and permanently lost his sense of humor too. So oh, yeah, yeah, he loses his sense of humor. That's one yeah. of the things he, he loses. But um, so what this, in my opinion, what I was thinking last night as I was watching it, what what what. What he establishes early on in the in probably I guess the first couple scenes. So John Lakeman is on a mission. This is like a a, a world saving mission, right? Like he's trying to disarm the Iranian government from creating nuclear weapons. So if what you're doing, if your mission is to save the world, you can excuse pretty much any behavior that he does because it's all justified so the fact that Mm -hmm. that this guy is his end goal is saving the world um you have free reign to really do anything 
So even pushing this yeah. innocent little Asian guy in front of a, a bus and, uh, you know, later on throughout the series, you see all these terrible things that John Lakeman yeah, has to did. do. Yeah. Yeah. But because he established the fact that he's doing it all to save the world, essentially, um, you're, you're along for the ride. You, you don't see. Indeed. Yeah. So. He, yeah, I, but, I, yeah, that? but I, I guess what's. What's special about John? I think he, even though he he think about that, about that it's all justified, but I I feel like he still feel really bad about it, you know, like um compared to other spies who just leave trails of body, John John feels like awful about it. And even when he he saw the blood, you know, in the first episode, when he was like, then he showed him that there's a blood there after he fight um the Jujutsu brothers. Yeah. John John like. Doesn't feel good. Really doesn't feel good. Yeah. I mean, if it's James Bond, he would just you know go you know right bang shakes and stuff. Yeah. It's so then that's really that's different. That's where yeah. the uh, the music comes into play. So yeah, yeah. he's John Lakeman. We realize early on is a good guy, a decent guy. He has to do these terrible things because this is what he's good at. This is you know the world that his father brought him into. And his way of coping mm-hmm. is by writing folk songs. And he, yeah. he he'll, <laughs> he'll sit there in a park or open mic nights or whatever. And he'll, he'll basically just spill his guts because he has to get it off his chest. Yeah. So his, <clears throat> his way of, of um, you know, processing oh, yeah. all these things that he does is through music, which is another beautiful, you know, thing that Stephen Conrad added in this character. Um, it's such a, it's such a complex guy that he created there yeah, but and, um, and steve himself is a is a musician too right he's he, a singer right yeah 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 so it kind of makes you wonder uh if if that's sort of based on his own experiences his own way of processing life you know because yeah. he's, he's a songwriter as well He's a good good songwriter too. I mean, yeah, very good you, singer. Very good. You guys voice. watch Patriot? You, I mean, I hope you you watch Patriot before uh, listening to this because it's all going to be spoiler fest here. And yeah, but yeah, like um, all of song John's uh, John's songs are amazing, and it's 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 funny, but it, it can also get really heartfelt and really sad. Yeah. Yeah, he's a yeah. Uh, great songwriter, great voice. Everything he does, I guess it's because he's from. Chicago. Uh, I always. Do you, are you familiar with Wilco, the band Wilco? Yeah, I mean, I think I listen on Spotify once or. Okay. Something. Yeah, he's got. Yeah. His music and, and a lot of the music that he chooses, a lot of it has <clears throat> strong uh, Wilco vibes to me. I don't know if it's just if if he's heavily influenced by the band Wilco or if that's just kind of the vibe there in Chicago, but that's where Stephen Conrad's based out of. So. Yeah. And. What's that? Uh, I think it's also really cool that, um, you know, because of Steve, that he's from Chicago and a lot of st- stuff in Patreon has to do with Chicago too. Like Leslie, you know, Leslie himself is, um, he's galvanized United, right, it's in Chicago. And I, I'm just glad that he's, um, and he's also used um, Chicago actors too in, in this show. A lot of them are from Chicago. So I think that's really cool that he, you know, he chose to, um, use you know somewhere near from home, yeah, yeah, he and use the P four from there too, yeah. Yeah, he seems to have a a love and appreciation for that city. Um, <clears throat> mm-hmm. So at the beginning of this series, you know, it, it starts off with a job interview, and then it kind mm-hmm. of goes back. So kind of the beginning of the actual storyline, I guess he's he's in Amsterdam. And he had he has just finished one of his missions, so you you kind of get the idea that this is something that's it's a repetitive thing that's been going on. He's been he has these crazy missions where all this crazy stuff happens and a lot of people die and it's all. And he just finished one, and he's taking mm-hmm. a little rest period where he's just kind of getting stoned and hanging out in Amsterdam. Um, but why? Why was he still in Amsterdam? Like after he finished that mi- that mission that they kind of allude to, oh, he was just because um, he's not supposed to to come back yet, right? I mean, after 
because he he just targeted a guy on on U.S. behalf. So so I think he has to like um you know stay off the grid kind of like stay for a while and maybe and probably rest too I guess. Okay, so yeah, he was just kind of in a in a little down period. So yeah. he had just finished a mission where he ended up getting tortured and yeah. um, he killed a hotel maid and all this stuff and. <clears throat> so now he's kind of in this lull period, and his then there's shots of you know his father having a conversation with someone, and you, you realize that a new mission is about to begin. Which it, it, kind of early on, the, the fact that he just finished a big complicated mission that they just they only talk about bits and pieces of, and now he's starting mm-hmm. a new one. You get the idea that this is a character where this is like a, a cyclical. Uh, part Luke. of his life, like you could almost, you could, yeah. you could probably do a prequel. You could. You, I I agree. Yeah. <laughs> you could do. I mean, yeah. If there's Patriot season three, right? I I, I think it would be a good idea to have like a, those, cold open where it sets, you know, years before the story, or maybe even you know in 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 in, in like Iran because I think John it, Tom said that he, he's been to Iran or something, John. So I think it, yeah. There's a room for for a prequel. I mean, yeah, but yeah, <clears throat> he's. But I, I I don't want to hope too much, but I, I I would I would you know, yeah, promote the hell out of it. It's if that's a thing someday. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, I think Stephen Conrad early on by alluding to a previous mission, and even when he, he tells John Lakeman that you know all you have to do is deliver this bag of money to these people. Yeah. He's like. It's it's not that simple. It goes wrong. It always yeah. goes wrong. So it's this is something that's happened over and over. So he's he's setting yeah. he's setting up. It feels to me like he's setting up something that he's intending to be a long term thing. Like it's Patriot, I think w- when he initially was setting this up, was he was planning on this being something that was going to be going on way longer than two seasons. This is like a yeah. a character that he wanted to to stretch out and and keep telling stories using this character in this world for a long time. Unfortunately, yeah, he only I, got to do two. I think, yeah, Amazon, man. I mean, I'm, I'm glad they give us Patriot, but to end it, um, yeah, two seasons, and that's like, I watched so many Amazon shows, and that's the best one they, they've got. And it's just sad, but I, I'm, I, I just appreciate that we got it this far, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. So he's yeah. he's in Amsterdam. His brother comes and tells him that, you know, dad needs mm-hmm. you to do this, to deliver this money, to go on this next mission. And John's hanging out there smoking weed, chilling out. He's like, well, I have a rodeo tonight, so I can't do it. He's, he's doing this thing where he's riding <laughs> mechanical bulls at a bar yeah. just to earn extra money. And he says, okay, well, I'm going to go to the the rodeo tonight if I don't make it then I'll go back mm-hmm. and then he goes to the, the rodeo that night his brother's watching him and as he's riding there's like a close-up shot of him letting go you think he let go on purpose yeah yeah absolutely okay. I think he he eventually like um, recognized that that he has to do it you know he, not only that it's yeah prob- prob- probably primarily it's a, it's a probably I think there's some part of it, like a big part that it's for the, you know, the country, for the world, but I think it's large, largely for his dad. Yeah. Right. I feel. Yeah. It's there. It's a very family show. You know? <clears throat> he can't let his dad down. Yeah, he, he can. And and when they come back home, they they have a brief, right? Like a, a, a and and in most spy spy story, they would go to an edge HQ. Like a headquarter and showing gadgets and stuff here, you know, in Patriot we see um, John, who's a who's who's an agent with his dad, who's a you know the the boss there, and just at home casually talking about you know this you know mission to save the world, and that's just yeah, so cool. I mean, so refreshing. Yeah, they're playing guitars yeah. together. Yeah, songs. if I needed you. Yeah. So. I, his his ultimatum that he set up where he was like, if I lose, then I'll go back yeah. home. It was just him kind of pretending like he had some degree of control. He knew 
he knew yeah. right away that he was going to go. He just wanted it <laughs> to feel like it was his choice, kind of. Choice, yeah. But it really wasn't. Poor John. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's a patriot, but for his dad, I guess. For the family. Yeah. And yeah, then, and... What's that? And... Uh, the song, like the... When... So, so like, when... when um, John and Thomas and, you know, Alice and Kubrick were sitting together, right? And John and and Tom was playing If I Needed You, started If I Needed You. I, and I, I heard somewhere that some people think it's like a, some John kind of like manipulating, no, Tom kind of manipulating John with that song. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't heard that. Like If I Needed You, like it's some kind of, you know, like a family obligation. Like, I'm not sure how to say it, but it's like, some it seems very kind very nice but maybe there's some manipulating manipulative things going on with that song maybe know? maybe dad is kind of tugging yeah. at his heartstrings a little bit saying yeah basically yeah. telling his son you know i need you to do this mm -hmm. through through the song yeah i never thought about that it's it's a really it's a really good song that they're singing it's really good and it, and when he goes back and he sees his wife, who he hasn't seen in however long, I don't know how, how long he was on the previous mission, but he comes back home, he sees his wife for a minute, and he knows that he's only got, you know, a day or two before he's going to have to leave again. <clears throat> I also wonder if that's another thing, because I know, you know, any writer uh, will kind of work through their own issues, through their work. I wonder if that's something that, Stephen Conrad, the writer, um, struggles with because when you're doing a movie or a show or whatever like that, it pulls you away from home for a long period of time. Yeah. So, and then you get these brief moments, you, you come back, you know, you get to see everybody. It's so happy. Yeah. You're, you're so, um, so joyous to, to be reunited with all your loved ones. And then you have to go on another mission. I wonder if this is something that he's, um, he relates to, you know, being in the in the film I think, industry. I think this could be it, right? I mean, um, John being a spy and, and but it's it, his version of um, like a writer, like as someone who gets to work in, in the industry and comes and go, you know, home and go back to work and as a loop, kind of similar to, to John and kind of similar to all of us too, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I think I heard some, I think I read his profile, Steve profile once that, um, the reason he, you know, the story Patriot, you know, sets in Milwaukee or, you know, in Chicago, right? And I think it's part of it is because he wants to be close to home, too. Right. Yeah, that's something I, and that's really, really sweet, if, if you ask me, yeah. Yeah, well, you, you can tell yeah. uh, in all of his, his work that family um, and things like that um, are very important to him. Mm -hmm. You know, close connections and all that. Um, yeah. So, he comes back, he has this brief moment of time. Um, I, and then he, uh, he gets his job. Yeah. That's, kind of, that's kind of where it goes next, right? So then, he's, he, then, then it goes back to him in the interview. And to where we started the show, where he's back in the interview and he's trying to... Um, you know, get this job at the engineering company. And that's when we meet. Uh, <laughs> he, he has to take a drug test. And he's been yeah. in Amsterdam smoking weed for however long he's been doing that, so he can't pass it. So that's when we meet. Mm. Um, what's the character's name? I know in real life it's it's Stephen Conrad's brother. It's uh, Dennis de Menes. Dennis. Yeah. Dennis, he, yeah. Who is by far the funniest character in the show. Absolutely. It's... So, oh, so fun to watch him, Chris Conrad. Yeah, yeah Chris Conrad in that show, he's it, by far the funniest, one of the funniest characters in any show ever. And um, <laughs> yeah. and you realize <laughs> uh, John Lakeman in this series, he he kind of almost falls in love with this guy. Like mm -hmm. you, you can tell that he likes him immediately. And the guy yeah, like yeah. he likes John Lakeman. He, he, he knows that he's part of this secret program and he wants to be a part of it. And <laughs> for some reason, um, he just, he just takes a, 
takes a liking to this guy. And, um, which later on, this is how he gets bonded to the actual storyline of the show is, you know, he helps him out with the urine test. He pees in the cup for him, which is a, a hilarious scene. But, um, later when they're in Luxembourg and he's going on his mission and, um, Dennis keeps following him. He's telling, he's telling him very clearly, yeah. I need you to leave me alone. I need you to leave me alone. And um, he's like, I'm going to have to stab you with a leg. <laughs> and so he stabs and he, him. He, 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 yeah, he did. And it's all, all, he followed John because he's just he's excited about this, right? He wants to help out because he's, um, he's like kind of, you know, a normal guy, a boring man. He wants some excitement. And also he's, he just, he was in the ROTC too. Yeah. And plus he's a jack. Yeah. Yeah, he's Jack. And yeah, I mean, if you you guys would know how funny that that, this, that scene is, where he take off his shirt and he just show off his muscle and rotate himself around. Yeah, that's and, my favorite. Yeah, I can be a big help. Yeah, he's yeah, like, you, prob- you, prob- you probably don't realize this because I'm wearing I'm wearing suits all the time, but I'm Jack. Yeah, Jack. <laughs> then he just slowly can be a big to, help. He starts just taking his shirt off. Then he just like presents himself to him, but um, so. <clears throat> he stabs him and he says, don't go to the hospital, right? Yeah. He's like, and he's basically, you know, I'm doing this for your own good. He likes him. He's like, I don't want to have to kill you. So I'm, I'm on a mission. But uh, he tells him not to go to the hospital. And then later, by the end, I don't want to jump ahead. I, I, I want to I go back to this. But to, yeah, yeah. But, but by the end, he, um, you find out that he did go to the hospital. And mm, Trouble. And, <laughs> right. And in the hospital, the, the detectives, because there was a murder there, and there's never been a murder there in however many years, the, uh, the detective wants to ask him questions. So now, since he went to the hospital, and detectives are asking him questions, now he is in it. He's in the story. Yeah, he's, and, yeah. he's forward um, involved with this. Yeah. And, and I mean, in Patriot, we got this terminology, like um, jellyfish. When you try to solve a problem, you make two more. And I think then it's... Is the biggest jellyfish of all. It just right. keeps spreading with him. That's yeah. that's the that's the big theme throughout it. The, the whole jellyfish thing. You you yeah. cut one in half. You just make two jellyfish. So he's yeah. he's now part of the story. So Lakeman John Lakeman has the choice. Basically, you know, I could kill this guy, eliminate mm-hmm. this problem, um, but he likes him. Yeah, they become best friends. So he's like now. I now I just this is another problem that I need to solve. And yeah. so now he's he's in it. So by For good. Yeah, by going to the hospital and getting himself involved, now he's officially part of the story, which is what he wanted. But mm-hmm. um after <clears throat> he stabs him in the leg and he's going on this mission because he lost he lo- he loses the bag of money because he has to fly commercial. He's got this big bag of money, mm-hmm. somebody steals it. He finds out where it is. It's in this house, which just happens to be, you know, um, six, six <laughs> Brazilian, Brazilians. Yeah, six or yeah. seven Brazilian jiu-jitsu brothers live in this house. And and they just, you know, John was going to take the the bag back, right? But yeah. um, then this fucking six mu- muscular Brazilian guy just came in be- behind him and do some jiu-jitsu move on him. And that's just the first glimpse of action we get to see, and it's it's crazy. I love it. Yeah, that scene um, is when the tone shifts. Like uh, up until that point, <laughs> it's kind of lighthearted. There's a little bit of a Wes Anderson-y vibe yeah, yeah. to it, and um, that moment when he fights the Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys, and the guys got him in a chokehold, he pulls a knife out and starts stabbing him, and you see the blood. Yeah, this is when the tone changes. This is to me. Um, like in a song when it shifts from a major key to a minor key. Mm-hmm. That's what that, that moment felt like to me. It, we go from, you know, there's some bad stuff happening, but it's all kind of lighthearted up until that point. It's when he stabs the Brazilian guy, mm-hmm. the tone shifts into a, a yeah. really a dark, darker, heavier, and you're like, okay, this is not just a comedy. Um, there, this, yeah, yeah, it's just... New, new, yeah, like like you said, we get to see this new tone established there, and it's yeah, it's lots of that, lots of that, yeah, and and also um, 
you know, just right before John went to this place with the uh, Jujitsu Bros, um, he was actually warned about that they could, they could possibly know Jujitsu, but John didn't really, really like um, mind too much about it. And then, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they, they got, they got warned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and 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 later on, right in 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 like few like episodes later, like there that guy that handler asked him like, did they know Jujitsu, John? <laughs> and John was like, <laughs> doesn't yeah, doesn't say anything. Yes. Did they? <laughs> so funny. So um, he ends up having to kill those guys, which in Luxembourg there were no murders for however many years. It kind of it gives you a breakdown. It's like. 2010 zero, cool. 2011 zero, and then then there's two yeah. murders. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The time that he's there, and so there's an investigator, and that's when we meet his his nemesis, the female. Yeah. Um, what's her name? The um, uh, the detective. Uh, Agath. Agath Albans. Yeah. Agath. Detective. Okay. Yeah. Agatha. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that's when we meet her, and she's awesome. She's she's cool. she's awesome. Yeah. yeah. She's his match, basically. Yeah. yeah, super smart, super cold. That's his uh, his nemesis. So we yeah. meet we meet her uh, at that point, and um, <clears throat> and I think this is this might be her um, first case too, right? Because right. in in a place where there's no murder, and this you know, um, uh, the police you know they they use this. Um, female de- female police to become homicide detectives because there's no murder in this town. Right. So and, and that, that yeah that's that's a very yeah extra detail. Yeah. So so there's never been any murders since she's been working there. All of a sudden there's two, so she's all in. It's not like she's working on a bunch of cases. She's, yeah, she she's excited. You can you can tell on her face. Yeah, this is her moment. So, which is the worst case scenario for John Lakeman, because <clears throat> it's not like just a random murder in a city where they're full of murders. This is it. There, she's devoting her life to to solving this this case. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> we meet the nemesis there, and we also get to meet, see his brother, Cool Rick. <laughs> Correct. Which is, um, he's in a situation, he's in a very, very difficult situation. And this is where in things, I mean, there are several parts where it turns into, you know, it's, it's emotional and, uh, but, uh, this part in particular, so he's a, a, a congressman yeah, and he, oh, he, was... ha- yeah, he had a, um, he hooked up with a girl at a bar in Houston or something and... She had a she had a baby, but because of his position, he can't acknowledge this baby. So he has a child, but the child doesn't know that he's his dad. He thinks he's just um, like a like a big brother type thing where yeah. he, he goes to help him out. So that really tugs at the old heartstrings. Yeah. So yeah, that's when we kind of uh, get to really see who Cool Rick is, his brother. Um. Anyways, that uh, Cool Rick doesn't have, I guess, the biggest role in episode one. He 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 ends up, he ends up being a, a bigger character later on throughout the series. But this is just kind of an introduction yeah. to him. And like his, the first episode, we he he kind of come in as like a to support John, you know, not not like um not just to help him in the field, but also help him like emotionally as well. So that's that's pretty nice and. And he was there, you know, like getting him the new shirt that he needs after that, you know, body business. And they also get to hang out a bit, right, at the at the cafe, right. where John, you know, come in and, you know, just you know, ask if anyone has any request, and and so no no one has it, so he he just play that song Charlie Foxtrot, mm-hmm. which is like basically about what happened there with the Brazilian jiu-jitsu and murder and stuff and. It was so funny that Kurik, you know, like when he heard about um, now you wouldn't stab a guy for doing that or something, and then Kurik tried to stop stop John from singing before it's too late because John was almost, you know, revealed yeah. the the operation right there, and it's just 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 a 
despite you know the fuck up, the violence thing that happened, there's still this you know, kind of funny moment happen now and then in Patriot, and that's r- really different, different shit. This shot from another. Right. Yeah. He um he goes to watch him at an open mic night, and he's up yeah. there <laughs> singing, and he's he's singing, you know, basically just venting through everything he had just been through, and. Uh, after that, they're just sitting outside together. He kind of puts his hand on his shoulder, and he's like, "You're gonna be okay. And, you know, I'm I'm always gonna be here for you." Which the the brotherly love, the father son love, these are themes that uh, Stephen Conrad uses a lot in his in all of his yeah, work. In, yeah, in Perfect Grace, right now, in in every show he he done so far, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a really sweet moment where you kind of see. Him and his brother together, and uh, and his dad. I remember he was uh, he was looking at old videos of them when they were little kids, <laughs> and they broke the camera. Yeah. And he 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 asks <laughs> Cool Rick. He's like, "Whenever you guys were young, was it really Grandma who broke that that camera?" And he's still staying <laughs> staying true to the story. Even though there's video evidence that they broke it. Yeah, yeah. And he he was like, "No, Mima did it. She was country strong." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, country strong. <laughs> And he and then Kubrick doesn't show any hesitation to it, you know. He just said right away because, and that just really and John was and Tom was kind of happy about that too because of the, the loyalty to the yeah, to yeah. John and the family. Yeah, yes. yeah, I get that too. Don't, think, don't snitch. Yeah, I think yeah, Dad asked him asked him that question after all those years. This happened when they were little kids. He's still <laughs> he's still loyal to his brother. He's still sticking by the story, and. Yeah. Uh, I think that made his dad happy and proud, you know. Absolutely. Even though, yeah. even though he's yeah. lying to him, he's like, you know, this is this is what he, what he needs. Yeah, and it's, it's a proud quality. It's a very nice quality. He knows he's going to take yeah. good care of his his brother. Mm-hmm. But um, <clears throat> so he has this this um mission out there, um. He, I'm trying to think. How, how does it? What what location is it when it ends? Because I, I know it ends in, it, it, it ends it ends in, in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in, in Macmillan. So he goes yeah. back. He goes back to um to the company, and that's mm-hmm. when all the shit comes together. In a yeah, way, in one take too. In one take, it's he, crazy. Yeah, he yeah. finds out that the guy went to the hospital. The detectives are after him. Jack Birdbath, who who is it? Jack Birdbath. Yeah, that's his name. Okay, Jack Birdbath. Mm, yeah. Uh, whenever he was first explaining to Dennis in the bathroom that he's part of a secret operation, he needs him to pee in a cup. We yeah. fi- we found out the security guard was sitting in the stall. This disgraced policeman. Yeah, he's disgraced. <laughs> he he accidentally shot yeah. a, like a Puerto Rican kid in the back or something. I think that's what she yeah. said. <laughs> and yeah, and and I think it's it's a thing that um, everyone says the the kid is nine years old, but it's actually fourteen years old or something. <clears throat> but yeah, and and Jack just leave this note that say that my, I have a dumb name, but I'm not dumb or something with a little bird drawing. <laughs> <laughs> right. So good, and and also when John was walking back to his car, right, he met Leslie, right, and Leslie is a boss who is like um basically a uh, Another antagonist in the story, like other than the police woman. So yeah, and and he, John was like, yeah, I'm gonna make a better impression of uh, with Denon when when he, Denon is the company they have to get the job right, um, have to compete to get to work for them. Um, and Leslie said like um like he he don't think um John going to get to come back to the to Luxembourg and he had to shore up his piping because you know. Earlier, he we didn't talk about this, but earlier John also missed his meeting due to this incident with um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Bros, right? Yeah. Yes. And yeah, uh, Leslie is such a such a great car- character, and and we will get to see him more. Yeah, we get to talk about him a lot more, even though the first episode kind of we didn't get to see him that much, but we already can see that energy he has, and it's yeah. Right. So so. Yeah. Like- <laughs> He comes back, his boss is on his case. This guy Jack mm-hmm. Birdbath hands him a note, so you realize that this guy mm-hmm. Jack Birdbath knows his secret. He's, he's going to be blackmailing mm-hmm. him. 
<laughs> the guy yeah. ended up going to the hospital, so he's he's dealing with detectives, and then he sees Steven, the guy he pushed in front of a bus. Oh shit! Is yeah. back to work. So now all these problems <laughs> have all kind of <laughs> come back together. And Steven, Odd ones too. Oh my god! Yeah, luckily mm-hmm. Steven doesn't mm-hmm. re- remember that he got pushed in front of a bus, but for now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he's working with a therapist and, who's helping him remember. And I like how how the therapists say that um Steven will eventually regain, you know, his, his memory, you know, once when they do more of the therapy. And I think that's that's pretty good because it's kinda add attention to it. That that tells the audience that he will eventually remember what happened to him. Right. So yeah, John definitely have to do something about that. It's another yeah. thing that he has to deal with. And the therapist, um, mm-hmm. the girl who's, who's Steven's therapist, is, also, mm-hmm. is the other funniest character in, that, in the whole series. Yeah, she's amazing. I love that character. She, yeah, she, she just acts like the opposite way you thought a therapist would, would act. Yeah. I mean, like... Uh, <laughs> she's horrible. Yeah, I, I, you guys know it. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. So the... The series throughout the first episode sets up all these things, and at the end, they all come together. It's like a whole gallery of cliffhangers, basically. It was yeah. like um, when he made the pilot, he was like he set it up to where you you just you can't say no. You, you need you yeah. You, you need more episodes. You know, after you watch the first one, because he sets up so many things. So. Um, it's not surprising that he uh, that he got a couple seasons. It's unfortunate he didn't get more yeah. seasons, but based on that pilot and, alone, I mean, how could you not greenlight that one? Yeah, and and back then, I think Amazon kind of have to like put out this pilot out there, right? And people have to rate it on Amazon.com or something. It's it's a weird time, but but Steve, I think Steve nailed the pilot. Yeah, he's he did such a good job, like you said that um, so many cliffhangers. <laughs> In, in one one scenes all at once and it just add the weight to John and also us as the viewer we feel the tremendous weight and problems that will come along the way and it's and it's gone like we're here for a ride yeah right um, yeah. is there anything like um, um, as a filmmaker yourself like any any film nerd stuff that you want to point out like as far as the cinematography or the editing or anything like that that I might not mm. have picked up on from episode one right? I, I'm not sure like I, I haven't thought too much about it but that one year at the end was really really impressive the way it just keep going and it's it's so smooth you know the, the one with him walking out the bar and the, the one that we just talked about earlier that that one was really impressive i think um and they also did a good job on kind of continuing how patriot looks despite you know um i think the pilot released in 2015 and the real one released in 20 like the rest of the season one released in 2017 and i think they they managed to like kind of keep the look the cinematography but um i i feel but you can tell some differences um, between one and two, like slightly. And oh, and also the episode one film is filmed entirely in in Quebec, I think. I'm not sure in Canada. Too. Oh, good. That's that's another thing. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah. But don't quote me on that. I think I have to make sure about it. But I think that's that's where they film. Let, let me just say that I will confirm this in the next episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to see if. So yeah, he, but I think that's that's where they film. So he made the pilot, and then two years later, the, the, he made the rest of them. Or I'm not sure when when they filmed like the episode two, or, but like the 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 show released in 2017, right? So yeah, okay. like the the yeah, because the the pilot, um, like yeah, it's it's a weird time. You 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 know about this, right? Like, a, like them, the like Patriot released first as of. Episode one, before. No, I didn't. I, I didn't know about. I mean, yeah, I, I found yeah. the show way after it was already out. Me too. Me too. I I, I found it on twenty twenty one, and just couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, I kept hearing people bringing it up in, in podcast interviews. 
I, I heard people, and it didn't sound like a show that I would want to watch. The, the name Patriot, like mm-hmm. I've never been into like political shows or yeah. To, so it sounded to me like it was it was going to be some spy thriller like, like Jack Reacher, Homeland, like, yeah, Wild. something like yeah, that. Yeah. Which isn't, I mean, not, not that those are bad. It's just <laughs> not stuff that I would normally watch. But I kept hearing yeah, people. I, so I think the. The kind of the trailer um and I think the name the name is like it sticks to me now I, I just I love Patriot but I feel like um maybe the name kind of you know doesn't represent the, its uniqueness well enough that's just my opinion but I but yeah I I if I go back I probably wouldn't change the name because I, I just love calling it Patriot so much but yeah I think that's maybe one of the reason people didn't think it's like you know this think it's like Homeland S and spy shows like that but in in reality it's like it's uh, so unique yeah it's yeah. yeah but I mean once you watch the show Patriot is is a good title because you re- realize that he is a true Patriot but yeah, um, but yeah. yeah, but yeah yes. the name itself doesn't really do justice to what it actually is yeah I, I heard that similar with um one one of my favorite all time comedies ever is Arrested Development, and I, I would tell people you got to watch Arrested Development, and they're like, man, I never would have thought to even watch that show because because the name Arrested Development doesn't sound like it would be a good comedy for some reason. <laughs> it sounds like I don't yeah. know what it sounds like, but it doesn't sound like what it is. Yeah, and and I mean, Patriot itself is one of the funniest show I have ever ever seen too, and no one would have thought it, it is like this this funny i mean i i didn't thought it would be this funny either no it's so, ge- it's, it's genuinely one of the funniest yeah. the funniest series i've ever watched yeah and it's not uh it's not the kind of humor you see like in a sitcom it's like no yeah it's more like in like in in real life interaction kind of way I, i'm not sure how to say it but it's just it's natural and in but it's also unique in its own way because Steve keep inventing these kind of vocabularies that they use, you know, cool and yeah, it is cool. Double great. They're just <laughs> it's in its own language and its own thing. Yeah, yeah I, I did like a little essay thing on my show after I watched it, which was which is what got me on the radar of Stephen Conrad was um and the whole essay was just about the humor in the show. That that's all that's all I was talking about. <laughs> and how uh how absolutely hilarious and and, uh, and how much fun it would be to be in the, the writing room of that so all, all I can think yeah. about when I'm watching that show I'm, I'm thinking about this group of guys sitting around coming up <laughs> coming up with these things and just how hard they must yeah. have been laughing yeah Boy. Mm. and I mean yeah I, I, I get that because I, I when, when I write I just try to come out with that you know ideas funny as well. just throw them around and it's just so joy to you know to to ima- even imagine it and to write it them eventually but i just really want to see how it's like so bad in the in steve writing room writer oh, rooms <laughs> yeah man. i bet man. it's insane but um anyways that's that's basically the the whole first episode yeah we kind of walked through um the the plot and I think, are there any characters that are introduced in episode one that we uh, left out there? Any, yeah, any I, there's, there's this, this guy, um, Kandahar, um, is like uh, John's opposite, who John has to hand it back to. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, but we, did, we didn't get to see him much, but yeah, he looks kind of like John for some reason. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, and... Oh, we get to see um, other character like um, Lawrence too, and we get to see a uh, like a sneak bit of him talking about like um, calling about him wanting like a Japanese girl to whip him with right, Twistlers, right? right? right. That that this kind of detail like sneak sneak right there, and yeah, that, that, that's pretty cool because it next time it came back, it's episodes later, mm-hmm. and it's just cool how like how Steve have it planned planned out already. Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's kind of runs the show at McMillan, and and isn't he like mm-hmm. uh, like he might not be the best engineer. He's kind of got the job from his dad or something. He's, yeah, it might might be something like that. I know. Right. So yeah. he he ends up getting in good with that guy, which is how he's able to stay on with the company because his his actual boss Leslie hates him. 
but he mm-hmm. kind of uh, goes over his head and becomes friends with the bo- the boss boss. So he uh, that's how he ends up yeah. kind of staying with the company and all that. All really cool and stuff that he worked out. Yeah, he did. Even I hope I hope for the best for him. I think he's once I um, I hope his shows like like he's he's developing these shows for HBO, right? I hope it it will happen. And if it happens, and I think like it will take over the world. Like like Steve work is just I know there's a huge audience for. Stephen Conrad works. It just have to be out there in the in the right platform, I feel. And I, yeah. Yeah, it seems like he's he's got this body of work that's incredible, but it's still just like right below the surface and yeah. of, of mainstream, which might be I um, mean a good place to be. It's mm-hmm. you know he's like I think we we talked about last time. He's he has a he seems to have a really good work life balance at the moment. But there's going to be one thing that he's going to make that's going to go right over that line into the mainstream culture, yeah. and everything else that he's done is just all going to going to blow, blow up. up. Yeah, and it's going to be this huge thing. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to the day that um, like I I that his new show comes out and it blows up, and I can tell my friends who won't listen to my recommendation on Patreon and say. Told you so, bro. <laughs> I told you this guy about to you know, blow up. So <laughs> you're waiting for that. Yeah, it will happen, man. I, I don't want to jinx it, but it, yeah, it it will. And I would I would share share that moment for uh, for for Steve and also for myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, it's for like us, your yeah. guy. Um, yeah. But you can tell in the industry. I mean, all of his little, little projects that he does, like even Ultra City Smiths, the amount of yeah big name celebrity type people who who sign on mm-hmm. to do these things you can tell in the industry it's a very well respected name like like if his name pops up a lot of people are jumping at it like I, yeah well I want yeah. I want to be a part of whatever he's doing mm-hmm. um it just hasn't I, uh, quite gone yeah. full mainstream yet which may, maybe it never will but uh, I mean I think he's doing all right either way yeah I, I mean at least I mean even if other people doesn't find it, at least we we did, and we we just we would just continue to tell our friends and family about it, and because it's it's a special. Sh- I mean, if if you're let me just say that if you're like um, you're like you, you, it's just so lucky. I, I just feel so lucky that I even found his show in the in the first place and found all this community that we we have. You know, like the Macmillan man, basically. Yeah, I'm just glad that. That yeah, I feel so lucky to even talk to you right now, to even host this podcast with you, and it's all because of Steve Conrad and 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 Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. It's a yeah. uh, it's one of those it's one of those shows that you uh, like a, like a great album that you uh, you, mm-hmm. you fall in love with, and it's it's it becomes part of your I don't know it just becomes part of your life in a weird way. It it, it did. Yeah, I, I mean, it's last year I I get to meet a guy, you know, he he is from US and we became friends because of Patreon. And when he come to Thailand, we get to meet. And I mean, that that that's just crazy, so crazy to me that a a TV show could could do that. Yeah. yeah it's and not not only him, I get to meet with um, uh, one of the people who work at Elephant, um, Peter Moxley. And we get and and we, we talk about Patreon and but eventually we just talk about every other things you know because we we just have you know similar passion and similar likes in you know films and TV show and and I feel like this way with every people I've become friends with because of Patreon we just seems to have you know similar tastes and things and it's just so awesome so double great yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I feel yeah. the same way it's uh mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine. Anybody who loves Patriot, I can't imagine me not liking them. <laughs> like if I m- yeah. met them in real life, like, I know. I maybe hug them, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe I would hug them, like um, like Kurik and you know, the the other guy did. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. Um, it's cool. It is cool. All right, well, we should we should wrap up this first episode here. True. Um, 
We are uh, going to continue this uh, whenever we get a chance. We'll do episode two. We'll start bringing in guests. We'll uh, we'll keep this thing going. This this show is starting on Zero Point Fiction, which I'm going to start a uh, another Spotify playlist. So they'll have their own um, <laughs> you know playlist on Spotify, and then eventually we'll probably move it over to its own show. <clears throat> But um, we'll just we'll get it going here on Zero Point Fiction, and then we'll see where it goes yeah. from there. Yeah, and and if you guys um, are Patriot fans and are interested in coming to speak with us, coming to talk with us, you know, fellow Macmillan men, just you know, feel free to hit us up. Yes. Yeah, I, and yep. to um to if you want to, you can hit me up on um Instagram, Twitter on Short Shot John. And to um, Joe here on Zero Point Fiction, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Send, yeah, yeah. Message me or Mike on any social media if you are a big fan mm-hmm. and you have stuff to say, and this show means a lot to you, and you want to and you want to come on and and talk about it. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. All, All right. right. All right, man. Well. Um, I'll I'll be I'll be in touch with you. Uh, actually, you're you're probably about to be going to bed there in Thailand, but um, <clears throat> I'll be in touch with you <laughs> with you uh, soon. Yeah, me too. Me too. All okay, right. so keep double great, Joe. Yeah, double great, man. Good talking to you. See you. All right. Bye.